The Raspberry Pi is a deceptively robust piece of hardware. You can even overclock it, and here we show you how to do it while remaining careful not to run it into the ground. Hi, this is Phil from Make Tech Easy, and this is how to overclock your Raspberry Pi. Retailing at around $40, Raspberry Pi 4 already gives you plenty of bang for your buck, but you can get even more out of this powerful single board computer by overclocking it. Overclocking the CPU and GPU can often deliver a noticeable performance boost, which is particularly useful if you're performing resource intensive tasks, such as playing games, streaming high resolution media, or using your Raspberry Pi as a mini laptop. Regardless of how you plan to use all the extra power, by the end of this video, you'll have successfully boosted your Raspberry Pi 4's CPU and GPU. Before we begin, everything you need to know about overclocking. Overclocking means setting your CPU and memory to run at speeds higher than their official speed grade. Despite the performance benefits, many people avoid overclocking for fear of avoiding their warranty. Unlike some organisations, the Raspberry Pi Foundation supports overclocking, so you can follow this tutorial without having to worry about your warranty. However, just be aware, there are some modifications that will void your warranty, such as overvolting. If this article leaves you eager to explore other ways to boost your device's performance, then you should review the Raspberry Pi Foundation's guidelines very carefully to ensure that you don't accidentally void your warranty. What you'll need. To complete this tutorial, you will need a Raspberry Pi 4, of course, a keyboard and a way to attach it to your Raspberry Pi, a monitor, a micro HDMI cable, an SD card that's compatible with your Raspberry Pi. You will be wiping this card, so make sure it doesn't contain anything you want to keep. A good quality power supply. When you're running the Raspberry Pi 4 at stock speeds, you can pretty much use any compatible third party power supply. But if you're going to overclock your Raspberry Pi, then you should opt for the official Raspberry Pi Universal Power Supply. By using the official power supply, you can be confident that your Raspberry Pi has enough power to run at overclock speeds. A way to cool your Raspberry Pi. When the processor works harder, it gets hotter, and the Raspberry Pi runs pretty hot anyway. If you don't reduce the heat produced by your Raspberry Pi, then it will hit its thermal throttling point pretty quickly, and you won't get the full benefits of overclocking. There are various options for cooling your Raspberry Pi, including heat sinks, a standalone fan, or case with a fan included. Or you may even want to get adventurous and build your own water cooling setup. That's way out of the scope of this video. Moving on. When you have these tools, you're ready to boost your CPU and GPU. Install the official Raspberry Pi OS. For the purposes of this tutorial, we'll be writing the Raspbian operating system to our SD card using Etcher. If you don't already have Etcher installed, then you can download it for free from the Balena website. Head over to the Raspbian website, download the latest version, insert the SD card into your laptop or computer, and launch the Etcher app. In Etcher, click Select Image, then choose the Raspbian system image you just downloaded. Click Select Target and choose your target boot medium, which in this instance is our SD card. Etcher will now flash the Raspbian system to your SD card. Once Raspbian is installed to the card, remove the card from your computer and insert it into your Raspberry Pi and boot your device. Update to the latest release. If you want to experience the latest and greatest overclocking capabilities, then you'll need to upgrade Raspbian to the latest experimental firmware build. Note that experimental releases have a higher chance of containing bugs, flaws and other errors, so you shouldn't use them in a production environment. To update your firmware, select the little terminal application in the toolbar and run each of the following commands in turn. sudo apt update, sudo apt dist dash upgrade. When prompted, press Y for yes. Now run the next command sudo rpi-update. When prompted, type Y again. You'll need to reboot your system in order to activate this new firmware, so click the little Raspberry Pi icon in the upper left corner and then select Shutdown Reboot, or just type Reboot in the terminal. Benchmarking Raspberry Pi Before you overclock your device, you may want to record some information about its current performance so that you can compare notes later. There are plenty of benchmarking tools on the market, but I'll be using Sysbench. Alternatively, you can skip this step entirely and move straight to overclocking. In Raspbian Toolbar, select the terminal icon, type or paste the following command into the terminal. sudo apt-get install Sysbench. Once Sysbench is installed, you can get a baseline for your Raspberry Pi's performance by typing the following command into the terminal. 
This will create a pre-benchmark text file containing information about your Raspberry Pi's current performance. It will save this in your home directory. Overclocking the CPU. When you overclock the CPU, you're increasing the clock speed of the central processing unit, which gives you a performance boost. Most workloads on a Raspberry Pi are influenced by the clock speed rather than the graphics processing unit. After overclocking the CPU, you should experience a noticeable performance improvement, regardless of how you're using your Raspberry Pi. To edit your Raspberry Pi's config.txt file, we require elevated privileges, so run the following terminal command. sudo nano slash boot slash config.txt the config text file will now open in Raspbian's Nano text editor with root level privileges. You can overclock the CPU by making some changes to these core configuration settings. Scroll right to the bottom of the file and find the section marked Pi4. On a new line directly beneath Pi4, add the following. Over underscore voltage equals 2 and arm underscore frequency equals 1750. Alternatively, if you have installed the latest experimental firmware, you can try these values instead. Over voltage 6 and arm frequency 2147. Save your changes with Control o and exit the file with Control x keyboard shortcut. You'll need to reboot the Raspberry Pi before these new configuration settings are loaded, so run the following command in the terminal window. sudo reboot. If your overclocking is successful, then Raspbian will start using your new configuration settings. Test your results. If you took the time to create a report before overclocking, then now's the time to generate a second report and compare the results. Launch a terminal window by clicking the little icon in the toolbar and then run the following command. This will create a post benchmark report. To view your report, select the file icon in the Raspbian toolbar and open the, both the pre-benchmark and post-benchmark files. You can now compare these reports to see exactly how much of a CPU boost you've gained. Overclocking the GPU. Now let's move on to the GPU. Open the terminal and run the following command sudo nano slash boot slash config.txt. Scroll down to the Pi 4 section and add the following on a new line GPU frequency equals 600. If you have the latest experimental firmware, then you can try boosting this number to 750. GPU frequency equals 750. If you're overclocking both the GPU and the CPU, then it's possible this may be too stressful for your overvoltage settings. So find the line that reads overvoltage equals 2 and change it to the following. Overvoltage equals 6. Save your changes with Control o shortcut and exit the Nano application using the Control x shortcut. Now all you need to do is reboot your Raspberry Pi and your changes will come into effect. With a faster Raspberry Pi, you can now put it to good use. Links in the description. Have you tried overclocking your device? Let us know your experience in the comments below. Okay, as always, thanks for watching. That's all for now. See you next time.